Good morning and welcome to the Elevate Renatus team call. This is your host, Keely Austin. As of right now, we have 80 participants on the line. Make sure that you invite your team. We don't want any ICMs left behind missing out on these awesome trainings. We do have these trainings Monday through Thursday. And if you're signing up any new people, not if, but when you sign up new people, make sure that you give them the information for these calls so that they get the reminder text each morning. This really is such a great way to start your mornings when you get on a little bit early too. You're able to check out some generally speaking, generally speaking videos by our CEO, Bob Snyder. And then the Money Matrix videos are incredible. And I love that they're not just real estate or marketing focused. They focus on all different types of businesses and success. So today I was asked by Michael Huggins to train. He was unable to make it today. And so um, what I've decided to talk about is <clears throat> my most recent Toastmasters speech. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Keely Austin, and I've been hosting these calls for a few months now, pretty much, uh, I believe since sem September. And Michael Huggins and Vanessa brought me on to Renatus about three and a half years ago. Um, they're two good friends of mine. I've known them about 13 or 14 years now. And so I've, I actually watched Michael transform from uh, the Jiffy Lube, <laughs> the Jiffy Lube guy to where he is now. And it's just been really incredible. And he lovingly refers to me as the five-year follow-up. He followed up with my boyfriend and I for too many years before we decided to get started. And I'm so happy that I did because ever since Renatus, I have just bloomed. I've really figured out what it is that I want to do with my life. And that's always been a big question mark above my head ever since I can remember. And so it just feels really, really good to be with a group of people who are all just like-minded individuals, yet so very different, so supportive. Um, I'm now just, I'm doing Renata's full-time. I was able to quit my full-time job a year and a half ago, which is crazy to say it's already been a year and a half since I've been working for myself. Renatus is truly an incredible opportunity. It's changed my life and it's changed thousands and thousands of lives across the nation. And I'm just very, very grateful for Bob Snyder and for the Huggins for, for, for Renatus. Um, I've done one fix and flip. I partnered with Bill Predabon who trains on Tuesdays on these calls and he helped me out with that deal and it was a really awesome flip. We completed that this year. And so I'm focusing on marketing as well as real estate and looking at short-term rentals right now, as I know a lot of people. And so I'm just excited about life. I've never been more excited about life, to be quite honest with you. And one of the biggest things that I've learned from Michael Huggins and from a lot of the leaders and just from Renatus in general, from uh, the communities that I've been involved with is personal development and how powerful personal development is and just having an open mindset of abundance and growth and no matter how much you think you know there's always always more to be learned and another big part of that personal development is gratitude and so with Toastmasters Toastmasters is a huge huge part of personal growth for me because ever since I was uh, ever since I can remember, you know, ever since elementary school, when I had to get up in front of the class, whether it was just to introduce myself or it was to give a presentation or a speech or something. I mean, I was just so nervous. Show and tell was a little bit different. I was okay with show and tell in elementary school, but I'm, I mean, like junior high, high school, when you had to give a report, I was the person who procrastinated and then usually ended up being quote unquote sick that day because I was absolutely terrified of getting up in front of the room, whether it was people I knew or whether it was people I didn't know, it didn't make a difference. I hated getting up in front of a group of people. And it wasn't until I started Renatus that I wanted to change that and face those fears and kind of see what was on the other side of holding myself back so much. So Renatus has done so much for me outside of just real estate and a marketing business. It's really, really changed my life and, and helped me become more confident and I continue to grow every single day. And so I don't know if anyone else here is a part of Toastmasters. I encourage you to 
commit to going. So if you do go, but it's not very, it's not a very high commitment. I think it's important to make it a commitment. I actually wrote Michael Huggins a check, an accountability check, four thousand dollars, and that was to hold me accountable to go to Toastmasters every single week, unless I was out of town or extremely sick. Those are my only two, you know, excuses to not go. And so that has definitely held me accountable, and I've, I've turned into loving it. I've gone from, you know, being kind of scared and not really looking forward to going to I'm really excited to go every single week. And I've now given four speeches and um, outside of, out of, outside of Toastmasters also at Renatus, when I give my story almost every week on Thursday night, I just share my story for a quick 90 seconds and between Toastmasters and just getting up in front of the room and doing that and Renatus and sharing my story. It's so incredible how much growth and how much less scared I am like that. I know and a lot of you know what I'm talking about when I say just that, that, <laughs> that feeling, that scared, scared feeling that you get when you have to speak and you don't want to. I know there's a lot of people who don't have that fear, like Casey Johnson, my boyfriend, he he doesn't have that. He's just confident up in front of the room no matter what. And that's awesome for those people who have that. But for those who don't know what I'm talking about, um, I just want to say that when you face that fear, it's incredible to feel the change and to feel the growth and to feel that, that fear just getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And a lot of people have also told me I've heard a few people say this where that fear is not just fear or that nervousness is not just nervousness it's excitement and so if you focus on the excitement feeling and the nervous feeling they're almost the same thing and so I've also switched my mindset from telling myself and thinking that I'm nervous to knowing that it's just excitement and that I'm growing from this and and that I know that whether I screw up when I get up there or I don't either way it's going to be okay nothing bad is, is going to happen and who cares if you screw up and one of the greatest things I've learned from Michael Huggins and from Bob Snyder, Michael probably got it from Bob, was that it's okay to look stupid. <laughs> it's okay to look dumb, you guys. So um, face your fears. That feels really good to overcome those fears. So another thing that's come from personal development and Michael Huggins is gratitude. And just, I believe it was two weeks ago, we had Wanda on our Thursday training on this call. And she trained on gratitude. And I really, really loved her training on gratitude because just that week, literally, I had done a, a Toastmasters speech on gratitude. And it was very cool to hear Wanda's speech on it because it was all different points, all an entirely different perspective on gratitude. And so it was just very cool to see the differences there. So what I've decided to do today is to share my Toastmaster speech on having an attitude of gratitude. And um, it's, only, <clears throat> it's only about seven minutes long, so it's pretty short. And so what I'll do after that is just open this call up to uh, whether you want to share what you're gr grateful for. I'm gonna open it up so we can all just kind of have a little gratitude party or if you want to just ask any questions regarding marketing. Um, I know we have some leaders on the call, so feel free to just come out and ask any questions that you want and we'll get some questions covered just depending on how long this call ends up being. And of course, we'll, we'll end at the top of the hour. So let me switch over to my other PowerPoint for Attitude of Gratitude. Good morning, everybody. Just looking at the chat. Thank you so much, Zach and Cecilia. Thank you. Thank you for bearing with me here. Just pulling up the other PowerPoint. All right, so the power of having an attitude of gratitude. PowerPoint is so fun. If you haven't used PowerPoint, play around with it. It's pretty fun. 
And also if you are going to Toastmasters, it really helps to have a PowerPoint as your guide because I didn't use really any notes when doing this. Just kind of follow through the images. So I'd like you to all share in the chat with me right now who currently uses a gratitude journal. And it can be just a notebook or it could be your phone or even in your head if you get up and make sure that you um, <clears throat> state some things that you're grateful for in the morning. Who currently does that? Whether it's five days a week, seven days a week, a couple days a week. Whoopsies. Awesome. And I, I figured that a lot of people on this call would because we're all um, kind of in that mindset of gratitude. And, you know, if any of us listen to Michael, we definitely hear attitude of gratitude a lot. Cool. So um, Zach did his this morning. Esther, I love it. Marsha, Lita and Saul, Megan, Levi, Lita. I have one, but miss some days. That's okay. David, Sandra, Wanda, of course. Hi, Wanda. Good morning. Beautiful. Diana. Hi, Diana. That's awesome. I really am happy to hear that because um, having an attitude of gratitude is really, really powerful and practicing that regularly can actually change our lives in lots of ways that we may not realize. And this is a photo of my really good friend, Kenny. I went to Olympus High School. And so I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah originally, but I'm out in Arizona now. And this is my really good friend, Kenny, that I went to junior high and high school with. And like a lot of friends, or like a lot of people know, um, your friends kind of go their separate ways after high school. And sure, you stay in touch with a few people. But Kenny was one of the people who we just kind of went our separate ways, not for any, any particular reason. And so when we graduated high school, 2007, we didn't talk much at all since then. Uh, we do follow each other on social media, but even on social media, we weren't really sending each other messages or anything like that. So we really hadn't been in contact for about eight years. And just three years ago, Kenny reached out to me for help. He sent me a text and it was really out of the blue. Like I said, we hadn't talked for about eight years. And so very out of the blue, I get a message from from Kenny saying that he's, I won't go into too many details here, but he was in a really, really, really dark place and he was struggling and he needed some help. And it's, it's kind of crazy because the timing was perfect. I had just started my journey with business ownership, entrepreneurship, personal development. I'd been reading a lot of personal development books and I had just started practicing gratitude. And I knew that gratitude was something that was powerful. So when Kenny asked me for help, I really wasn't sure how I was going to um, help him. Um, but then I knew the least I could do was to be there for him. And so I said that, why don't we become accountability buddies? I learned that word from my friend Ariel, accountability buddies, and text each other because he's in Salt Lake. I'm in <clears throat> Arizona, so we couldn't really get together. But I said, why don't we text each other as often as possible? Our goal was every day, 10 things that we're grateful for. And he was totally open for that. So we started right away. And it's been about three years now. And almost every single day, he and I have texted each other back and forth, 10 things we're grateful for. And on top of that, I, I sent him a couple of books to read. And he, and he read them, which you know I think is cool when some people are asking for help. Maybe they don't always take action or perhaps when you're trying to help somebody, maybe they're not asking for help, but you know that they need help and you try and write, make recommendations or suggestions on something that you know will help them, but they don't see it and they don't do it. And it's, it's frustrating from your point of view, but, but we understand that people, if they want to learn and they want to grow, they have to want it from within. So whatever uh, Kenny was going through, it had gotten dark enough where he knew that he needed to reach out and I'm so grateful that he had the courage to do that so I sent him a few books and I love that he you know actually took action and dove in and he actually took action on our text and we started texting each other so this photo is from October I was in Salt Lake City for Renatus Regionals 
And I made a point to meet up with Kenny because uh, I knew that he was doing a lot better. And we had built, you know, this new kind of relationship over the last three years from texting each other. I, I learned a lot about him. He learned a lot about me because we're texting each other 10 things we're grateful for. And sometimes it gets kind of personal. So we really built this new fresh relationship. And so when I went to go see him, I learned a lot about what he's up to. He's been going to the gym every day. He has full custody over his daughter now. He is working. He is writing almost every day. He's a poet. And he's doing amazing. And I know that there's a lot of things that went into his recovery and went into him getting better. But there's no doubt in my mind that him and I texting each other back and forth consistently over time you know, those small steps over time really, really do make a difference. And so I'm just, I'm proud of that. And I'm really proud of him for actually taking action and following through. And if either of us would slip off and maybe go a week without texting each other, it was usually him, but, but either one of us would just hop right back on and, and then we would, you know, start over. So I just love that about him. And if there's anyone that you know, that you can think of that might need some, something uplifting, um, try, try doing this, try holding them accountable and vice versa, have them hold you accountable for a gratitude list. <clears throat> so fault finders are people who love to complain. They love to just find something wrong with almost every situation. And, and these people are not solution oriented by any means. You know, they're not looking for to fix the problem or to fix whatever it is they're complaining about. It's like they're just kind of getting off on the, the attention from complaining. So these people will look outside of a window and rather than seeing a beautiful sunset, they see the specks all over the window, the dirty window, and they complain about the dirty window. So fortunately in our Renatus group, I feel like this picture is, is the polar opposite. We have tons of people lining up at the gratitude line which is amazing and I'm, I'm grateful for that. However, outside of Renatus, I think it's very common that in our families, friends, work, we are surrounded by complainers. So <laughs> this is for people in your family. You might have complainers in your family, fault finders in your family. You probably have them in your workplace, unless your workplace is Renatus. And you probably have them in your circle of friends as well. And like most of us in Renatus know, you become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So naturally, if your family, your friends, or the people you're working with, you know, you're spending the most time with all of those people, a combination of those people. And naturally, if those people are complainers and fault finders, you are going to end up being like that as well. And so remember to choose carefully who you choose to spend your time with. It's a choice. It's not always easy to change your group of friends, but sometimes that could be life altering for you if you're spending your time around people who are not serving you. I have some chats, just going to check the chats real quick. Oh, thank you, Amanda. Awesome. Thank you guys for, um, for the encouragement. So Three steps to developing an attitude of gratitude. I wanted to just keep this pretty simple and also I had to keep it within five to seven minutes for Toastmasters. Um, so three steps to developing an attitude of gratitude. Step one is start expressing gratitude every chance you get. So not just in the morning, if you have your morning ritual and you write down a few things you're grateful for. I challenge you to throughout the day, whether it's, um, just to yourself or you're having a conversation with somebody and you notice something that you're enjoying or it's a beautiful day or whatever it is, you know, just express gratitude and make it a regular thing throughout the day. Who can you, who can you tell in your life right now that's made an impact on your life that you're thankful for them? And it's really easy to send someone a text or even a phone call, but to write someone a letter, I think is really, really special because you're taking the time to write it. You're sending it through the mail. Um, something about you know them seeing your handwriting is special. Um, 
them receiving a letter in the mail is special. I just think there's a lot of really neat touches to actually writing someone a letter or a card. So write that down as a reminder for yourself to write someone a thank you card or a letter. Start a gratitude journal is the next step. And I know a lot of us on here already have one. So those of you who don't, I challenge you to start a gratitude journal. Take just five minutes in the morning. It's, it's really powerful to start it in the morning specifically because you're just starting your day with a, a grateful mind, a grateful heart. Start a gratitude journal or write it down in your phone or you can just list a few things off, off the top of your head. You don't have to write it down, but just to practice it regularly is the key. And the last step that I wanted to share for how to develop an attitude of gratitude is to go on a daily rampage of gratitude. And I'm going to show a short video after, the, after my little PowerPoint here of where I got most of these ideas. So just stay tuned for that. Um, like this verbiage here, I didn't come up with that myself, so I want to give credit. Go on a daily rampage of gratitude. I just thought that was a fun way to put it. But this is where you just simply take a few moments and you look around you and you just express gratitude silently or aloud, whatever you want to do for, you know, everything around you. Things that you just don't even notice, like, um, you know, someone built the house that you're in. Someone built the desk that you're using right now. Someone built the pipes in your home and under the ground that are providing you with clean running water. Just these little things that without, life would be pretty crazy. Life would be, you know, life would kind of stink without a lot of these things that we have and we just overlook them because it's just, it's just normal for us because we see it every day. It's just, like I said, it's normal. But when you actually step back and think about what life would be, life would be like without those things, then <clears throat> it really kind of makes you realize like, you know, you've got it pretty good. And when you're grateful, when you're not having a good day, that's going to make a huge difference. It's easy to be grateful when, when life's going good, when you're having a good day, it's very easy to find things to be grateful for, but it's very important to be able to find things to be grateful for when you're down on the dumps or when things aren't going your way and you're not feeling very good, very motivated, very happy, whatever it is, that is when it's most important to be grateful. And that's when it's important to understand this step number three to just whatever it is around you, you know, whether you're in a good place or a bad place, the fact that you're alive, the fact that you woke up today, those are things to be grateful for. So just remind yourself, maybe once a day, look around you and just be grateful for everything that you have. The benefits of gratitude are awesome. And I have some fun pictures to share with you. So our theme for the day that I gave this speech was kids these days. And so I picked some cute little kid pictures. Um, but some of the benefits that come with practicing an attitude of gratitude are you will start to sleep better. You will be more enthusiastic. Which speaking of enthusiasm, that's something I am working on. I know I, um, I have just a really kind of mellow demeanor and very easygoing and just kind of mellow. Sometimes I'm kind of shy. And I'm certainly um, becoming a lot more confident and a lot, a lot more enthusiastic. And that's just uh, something I'm working on in, in particular. Megan, you're mellow as well. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of my feedback at Toastmasters, people call me monotone. So I'm working on that. You guys bear with me. Even on the, even on the intros every single morning, I, I always kind of kick myself because I want to be more enthusiastic. So just know that I'm working on it. <clears throat> With an attitude of gratitude, you can actually be happier and healthier. You can overcome challenges faster. I believe that you just become more solution oriented. You're more positive. You see more clearly. Um, therefore, you're seeing more solutions and you're more creative. And, and especially in this business, you know, we're always looking, lo looking for win-win situations. And so I think this one's um, true and exciting. Overcome challenges faster. 
and receive more opportunities again with with the last one just the fact that you're seeing more clearly you're more creative you're op more open-minded you're more positive and you can even get better results so this kind of goes hand in hand with the slight edge principle and this book is really really uh, it's a simple simple read and it's an easy read but it's a very very powerful concept if you have not read it i highly recommend it i don't know if it's on the audible account but um, you could probably get it for 10 bucks or less so the slide edge by jeff olson the principle is if you do simple daily actions or disciplines or simple errors in judgment because no matter what you do no matter what decision you're making you're either making a decision to get you closer to your goals or that's going to make you fall a little bit further away from your goals um, you know they say that there's no plateau you're either going up or down with every decision you make and so as time goes on you're either going to be getting closer to your goals closer to where you want to be based on every single decision you make or further away and so by practicing gratitude daily just uh, going back to the example with my friend kenny simple daily practices over time and i really think time is, is a powerful component there because one week of practicing gratitude that's going to be powerful but that's not going to be as powerful as maybe three years down the road so i love this principle it's simple and it's powerful and that book is really really good so check it out this is lucy lulu and i dog sat her about two weeks ago i watched her for about 10 days i stayed in her house with her and three other dogs and a cat it was a full house so much fun and this little lady was found with no hind feet so we'll never know how she ended up like that but sweet little lulu has no feet on her back legs and on top of that she's paralyzed so the diaper the cute little diaper serves two purposes she is uh, not able to control her bowels so obviously the diaper does that but she gets to scoot herself around and she's really good at it she actually does have a scooter with little wheels and you can put her in a little wheelchair and she rolls herself around but she actually does and she's so small she does really well just scooting herself around on the diaper so the diaper creates a nice pad for her to slide around and she's happy she's playful she's energetic i mean she's the happiest little dog and she's very spoiled very well taken care of however my point is when i was with her for 10 days i was constantly reminded of uh, to be grateful for my health not everybody has all of their body parts not everybody was born with all their limbs or people have been accidents where they lose something um, or just you know health in general that is something that we overlook every moment every day and we, I'm just generally speaking, maybe some of us don't, and that's great if you don't, but I know that most days go by and a lot of us just don't even realize like, you know, how grateful or how lucky we are to be alive and to have the health that we have. So take a moment and just be grateful for your health. And the next time you stub your toe, I want you to be grateful that you stubbed your toe because you have a toe to stub. Not everyone has the luxury of stubbing their toes. And pain, pain's a good thing. Pain lets us know that there's a problem, right? So I, that's my little speech. Um, I want to leave you all with an action step. Everyone at Toastmasters, so I actually gave this speech twice, which is really cool. You give a speech and they give you a ton of feedback. You get like however many people in the room, each person in the room writes you um, feedback. They have a fill out uh, form to fill out with all this feedback for you. So I gave this speech the first time. And the first time I gave the speech, I said, write down at least 10 things that you're grateful for every day. Because I know that in the EMT program for with Michael Huggins and Dane Clark, they have you do 50 things a day for several weeks. And then after 50 things a day, you go down to 10 things a day. So 
for us Renatus peeps, 10 things a day is like no big deal. But everyone in my Toastmasters group was really overwhelmed. <laughs> when I said to do 10 things, they were like, oh, like all my feedback sheets were like, 10's kind of a lot. Maybe we should just start with one. So that's why it says one thing. But for you guys, I want everyone to do at least 10 things because I know you're capable of that. We're all capable of it. And it's so easy to find things that we're grateful for. Just look around you. It's very easy. And another point I want to a touch on is not to just simply list things off and then call it, a, call it a day. Each thing that you list, think about why you're grateful for that thing. And just take a moment, what would life be like without that thing? You know, it's a lot more than just creating a quick list, a quick list and then moving on. So there's my speech. I'm going to go through and read some of these chats. I love um, the participation. Thank you guys. You're making me feel a lot more comfortable. And I mean, you guys are all family and we know that. Let's see here. Okay. What an amazing story about you and Kenny. Thank you. Um, my challenge to myself is to write in my gratitude book and not repeat something. That is hard because I know that I definitely repeat things. Um, something that I already written down before, but me get to see and feel my creation of life just sharing. That's awesome. I read an article a few months back where it stated the top 1% of successful people have gratitude as the single common practice they practice. Wow, Ross, I didn't know that. That's really, really cool. And I'm not surprised, honestly. Uh, you're doing a great job. Thank you. Grateful for daily blessings. Absolutely. And we all need reminding to be grateful and to practice gratitude. So easy to let life get in the way at times. Absolutely, it really is. So um, if you have to set a reminder in your phone, do so. Um, I know that I need to set a reminder for me anyway. So um, cool. Well, thank you guys all for, for staying on the call. We have 97 people. That's super exciting. I love it. So please feel free to come off mute if you guys have any questions whatsoever about Toastmasters, about marketing Renatus. Um, I have been in the, in the business for about three and a half years and I am five star. However, I am no expert. So I don't, I'm hoping that I can answer your questions well, but also if there's anyone on that wants to chime in and answer and help me answer, please feel free. So feel free to come off mute and ask any questions. And if we don't have any questions, we'll, we'll, um, we'll cut it short. So Brian says, something I like to do is feel how those things make you feel. And I think that's really important to not just have this be an exercise or a practice that we have in our head. We need to think about how those things make us feel. That's really powerful. I did some work with a, a, life, uh, a life coach, I guess you could call her. Um, she also did soul therapy, S O U L therapy, where we just did some really cool inner spiritual healing work and sessions. And I loved it. And, um, something that she brought to my attention was, or to my awareness was how many times I answered her questions starting off with, I think versus I feel. And Ever since I started, just even the verbiage changes it, but ever since that awareness happened, I feel like I've gotten so much more intuitive thinking about how I feel versus think and just listening to my feelings first and not just thinking all the time. So uh, thank you for, for, for bringing that up, Brian. That's a good point to think about how you feel about things. Eloy, I was watching the Steve Harvey show. I love Steve Harvey. Um, hi, Keely. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Who is this? This is, this is Patricia from California. Hey, Patricia. How's it going? Okay, good. Um, you had mentioned a life coach, and I'm interested in finding a life coach. How did you find yours? Through Facebook, through a, a mutual connection of a friend. And so I've just been following her for probably close to a year and loved her feed so much. And so I decided to get more involved and see what programs she had to offer. 
if you're interested, I'd be happy to send you her information. I don't know that she still does one-on-one -on -one coaching, but she has a lot of really amazing online content. And I could think oh, of a few okay. people to refer you to, too. Okay. I'll hold it. Get you mine. Um, will you... Let's see. I'm just going to write down your phone number and I'll text you. Is that okay? Okay. Um, you ready? Yes. 909-532-4050. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. Have an awesome day. We've got about 15 more minutes. If there's anyone else that wants to come out and share anything, doesn't have to be a question. If you want to share what you're grateful for. Um, I hope everyone had a really great Thanksgiving. I also thought this was a perfect topic for Thanksgiving season. However, don't, um, don't limit your gratitude to, to just Thanksgiving. Make this an annual thing. I've got a couple people off mute. Did you want to share something? Hi, Keely. Hi. Yeah, this is Gilda. How are you? Hi, Gilda. I'm doing yeah. well. How are Thanks you? Thanks for the awesome training. Yeah. Welcome. So I was just you know, wondering if you could, is there a way you could, you know, uh, show back the one slide right, right after the attitude of gratitude? Because I missed that. I was going to take a picture of that. Oh, yeah. Um, do you remember what it was? It was of my... The one after having an attitude of gratitude is a picture of my yeah. friend and I, Kenny. Yeah, it was it was right before. I think it was. Let me see. It's right before. Um, let me see. I took all the pictures right before the cartoons from Simpson and. Oh, the Fault Finder one. Um, I'm not sure if that was, but it was right before the Simpson character. All right, let me share it with you. So can you see the slide right now? Uh, hold on, let me just, um, yeah, yeah, I think that is, that may be it. Yes, I think that's the one. Yeah, because I don't have that. Oh, that's fine, I believe, yes, hold on. Let me transfer you to, nope. yeah, I, yeah, I don't have that, so I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. All right. Is there anyone else that wanted to come off and share or ask a question? Hey, Keely, this Hi. is Mike. I was, so I was looking at Ross's reading that article about the gratitude as a common theme. And then, you know, when we read the book, Think and Grow Rich, uh, Napoleon Hill, he's found similar, he has similar findings that like having a positive mental attitude was at the top of the list of the riches. It wasn't money. It was the it was having a positive attitude about life it was the number one rich rich number one top of the riches. I love it. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Mike. Yeah, thank you, Keely. You're welcome. Love ya. Love you. Hi, this is Matt from Southern California. How's everybody doing? Hey, Matt. Good morning. Morning. I've been doing this this thing with. Um, this training with, uh, it kind of comes from Bob Proctor. I don't know if you guys have know who he is, but one of the things he does is he, he says is to state your goals. I'm so happy and grateful now that my goal is achieved and like frame your goals that way, you know, and, and give gratitude for your goals. Like, like they've already been accomplished in the present tense. So that's a pretty cool, uh, little, little thing that you can do too. If you, Will you repeat that statement goals. that one, yeah. one more time? I am so happy and grateful now that, and then your goal, that I am five star, that I, you know, I'm in the top 10, that I, that I have a team of a hundred people. Just, just, you say your goal after, but you state it in the present tense with gratitude. That's so powerful. I love that. That's a great thing to add to our affirmations. If you don't state affirmations, I highly recommend it. And that would be a perfect, perfect statement to add to that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, no problem. Anybody else?
The Science of Getting Rich. I love that book so much. That was one of the first books I read when I became a part of Renatus. I was going to study groups with the amazing Phoenix team and I found out about that book. We read it together as a group and we kind of broke it down and analyzed some of it together. If you have not read Think The Science of Getting Rich, that's a really, really, really good book by Wallace Waddles. So thank you, Marcia. I am grateful for the positive input of the content and energy of this call each morning. Thank you, Melissa. Berta, great job. I'm grateful for your service and the connection that this chat brings. Thank you. To the community and honest trainers. So warm. Uh, Monica, I'm very much like you, a shy person, but I'm starting to come out more, more in my comfort zone talking to people. I appreciate you telling how you were and that you were overcoming this fear. Thank you. I'm working on overcoming this fear. So the best way to do it is just to get out and do it. Uh, Michael Huggins always says, Ain't nothing to it but to do it. <laughs> so just do it. I love it. Uh, someone's off mute. Did you want to share something? Olivia, did you want to share anything? Or Olvia? Oliva. Zach says, I'm grateful that my family, my wife, and two adult children are a part of this Airbnb business. That's amazing. So great job, Monica. I'm excited that you're starting your gratitude journal today. Was there anything else anyone wanted to add or ask? Uh, the recording of this call, I'm going to put it up a little bit later today. It takes some time for it to get uploaded, uh, but I will get it up today. And uh, every we are up to date with all the past recordings. So if you look up any recording before today, it should be on Elevate Renata's YouTube channel. Um, let's see, I'm going to try and remember a quote by Sadhguru, and I might butcher it, but um, Sadhguru said something really powerful that has stuck with me ever since I heard it. He has an online inner engineering program that I'm ready to do it again. It was that phenomenal. I did it several months ago. Um, but wow, what did he say? He said something along the lines of the sun rose on time today. This is no small thing. If it didn't, life would quickly diminish. When we realize our place in the universe, we will become dripping with blissfulness and gratitude simply to be here. And I believe Michael Huggins shared it once that I'm not sure where he pulled this information, but around 250,000 people didn't wake up today. The fact that we all woke up today is something to be very grateful for. And I believe around three to 5 million people know someone who didn't wake up today. And so just be grateful for your family, your friends, those around you. Even when I'm driving, I will say I'm grateful for everyone on the road right now around me that they're being safe. I hope that everyone gets to their destination safely. Like I just put gratitude out there as often as I can. And I really think that that's going to come around for full circle. Um, so anyway, we've got 79 people. What time is it? 8.53. I'm going to go ahead and what are the two books? The two books are The Slight Edge, The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson and The Slight Edge, Jeff Olson and The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace. D waddle, waddles waddles. You're all amazing. Have an awesome Monday Monday. I am very grateful to have been able to share with you today my little gratitude speech, and I am actually really pleased and and surprised, honestly, that so many people stayed on. So thank you. You guys are amazing. Have an awesome awesome day. 
and we'll see you tomorrow morning on the call. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Keely. That was awesome. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome.